Hi, welcome. Welcome back to the Citizen Channel and part two of our look at Raheem Sterling. Yes, from 2015 to 2022. So we got up to season 2018-19. Please go back and check uh, part one of this if you've not already watched it so we can get a gist of it. About 12, 13 minutes, something like that. So let's get on with this one. Lots of lots of squeeze in these parts two and three. Right, part two, 2018 to uh, sort of February and March 2021, I think we're going with this one. Uh, in which Raheem, of course, becomes an integral part in Pep's record-breaking city. Uh, more personal glory for him. Uh, domestic treble in there somewhere as well, all part and parcel. Yeah, we'd finished off. Yeah, we'd not have done too badly, had we? Uh, all right, took Pep a couple of seasons, 100 points. Uh, that wasn't bad, was it? And a Premier League and Carabao Cup double. On the 12th of August 2018, Sterling continued where he left off. Yeah, he's had a fantastic, fantastic uh, stats the season before, scoring the opening goal in City's 2-0 away win against Arsenal. On September the 1st at home to Newcastle, he opened the score in his 2-1 win. In the very next game of the Etihad, he celebrated his 50th Premier League goal in a 3-0 win over Fulham. In November 2018, he signed a three-year extension. Yes, it had been intimated or hinted at the previous season. I don't think he quite got parity with uh, KDB and Sergio, which is what he wanted wage-wise, but I'm sure he got a bit of a rise. And this will keep him at City in theory till 2023. Well, we know that didn't last, didn't we? So he said, I was delighted to sign. My development at City has been incredible. I felt from the first minute I got here, it was the right choice for me. It certainly was. Pep said he's a winning player. He's so important. He's stable, focused. He become a better player he can reach whatever he wants Bournemouth were in town and as we know from part one he had a good scoring record against Bournemouth on the 1st of December and yes he did score again he carried on his marvellous scoring feats netting again in a 3-1 win December 2018 Sterling alleged that sections of the media yeah carrying on from part one when he was getting some Unfair stick from the media. Sections of the media served to fuel racism with their portrayal of young black footballers. The comments emerged after Sterling was subjected to alleged racist abuse during City's 2 0 defeat at, oh, I wonder where, oh, Chelsea, yes, on the 8th of December. On the 20th of January 2019, he headed a goal to help City win 3 0 over Huddersfield Town, and we remained on the heels of Liverpool at the top with two thirds of the season played. So we weren't, we weren't letting them get, into, get in too far ahead at that stage. On the 20th of February 2019, the first leg match of the Champions League against Schalke. He left it late again. He was good at late goals, wasn't he? When scoring the winning goal in the 90th minute this time. So that's quite early for Sterling in a 3-2 win. In the Carabao Cup final on the 24th of February 2019, he scored the winning penalty in the penalty shootout to win the Cup. 4-3 on pens after a 0-0. Well, not, not a poor game. It wasn't a bad game. It was just a 0-0 game with Chelsea. Pep said he didn't watch it. And he asked Raheem at the time where he put it, and he simply said top bins. <laughs> that says it all. With then the visit of Watford on the 9th of March, City sat one point ahead. Yes, we've gone ahead of Liverpool. Had the League Cup in the cabinet in the quarterfinals of the FA Cup and had one foot in the quarters of the Champions League. He then scored a hat-trick for the first time since 2015 within the space of just 13 minutes, the fastest hat-trick of the season to secure a 3-1 victory over what over the Watford. With goal column ticking along, he scored again in the return leg of City's Champion League clash with Schalke to help the club record record a 7-0 win. 10-2, 10-2 victory on aggregate, equal the record for the largest winning margin in the knockout phase of this competition. With an FA Cup final book, disaster. 17th of April 2019, Sterling scored two and had a winner on aggregate, disallowed in injury time. You know which game I'm going to, don't you guys? Which will have sealed his third hat-trick of the season. This is in, of course, the City 4, Tottenham 3 win in the UEFA Champions League quarter-final second leg. However, due to that, we were knocked out on the away goal rule. Of course, we'd lost the first leg 1-0. On the 18th of May 2019, Sterling scored twice and provided an assist as City defeated Watford 6-0 in the 2019 FA Cup final to equal the record highest final score ever and clinch, yes, clinch that domestic travel. Wasn't bad going, was it? 2018-19 season, he was named to the PFA Premier League Team of the Year and won the PFA Young Player of the Year award and FWA Footballer of the Year. It was what, uh, it certainly was another superb season. 
If it could have been better than the last season, it probably was. His honours, of course, the Carabao Cup, the FA Cup, the Premier League. His personal stats, again, very, very impressive. 31 league starts, three as subs, 17 goals and 11 assists. Uh, Cups, 14 appearances, three as sub, eight goals and six assists. So very, very impressive. And we're going to go on to 2019-20, a 30-goal season. So things are going to get even better, aren't they? And this obviously is the COVID-affected season. In the 2019 FA Community Shield against Liverpool on the 4th of August. Yeah, Skirling, as I said, Skirling hadn't been doing too well against his old employers, but he scored the opening goal of the match early doors in an eventual 1-1 draw. And then we won the tie, of course, 5-4 on penalties to lift the Community Shield. That was a good day. I enjoyed that one. In City's opening game of the 2019-20 Premier League, Sterling scored a second second half hat trick, a 5-0 win away over West Ham. And yes, against Bournemouth away, he scored in a 3-1 win on the 25th of August, taking his tally to six goals in just four games. On the 28th of September, 3-1 win at Goodison Park. Again, we remember that 4-0 defeat when Pep first came. That was totally opposite on the 28th of September, 3-1 win at Goodison Park. Sterling's goal was his 100th club goal, 23 for Liverpool 77 for City. On October, uh, on October 22nd, 2019, Sterling scored his first UEFA Champions League hat trick in a 5 1, I think his first and only Champions League UEFA hat trick, uh, in a 5 1 win over Atlanta in the group stages to make it three wins out of three at that stage. He scored over in Atlanta in a 1 1 draw on November the 6th. Raheem had scored 13 in 15 starts, but despite this, City had begun to fall behind Liverpool in the league. Knew how that would pan out, don't we? When Raheem scored two against Wolves on the 27th of December in a 3 2 defeat, it ended a run, ended a fantastic run for Raheem of 45 games where we'd never been on a losing City side. It scored, it scored in 45, it scored. He scored in games there, 45 games, won 42, and we'd drawn three of those 45. So when we got beat by Wolves, that ended a, uh, something that had never been done since the Premier League came into being. And those two goals would be Raheem's last goal scored until June the following year. In February, all right, all right, COVID did have an effect. In February 2020, during an interview, Sterling was asked whether he would one day like to play for Real Madrid, as they sometimes are players, aren't they? And what's he supposed to say? No, I can't stand them. He said anyway, in reply, Sterling explained, no one knows what the future will hold. Correct. I'm a player. I am always open to challenges. But right now, my challenge is at City and I'm really happy. Sterling helped City lift the Carabao Cup again on March the 1st with a 2-1 win against Villa. And after a disappointed 2-0 loss at Old Trafford, uh, with City over 20 points behind Liverpool, the season was halted for COVID. Not the greatest time to finish. You're not that we've got to uh, play on at some stage. If they cancelled it and knocked Liverpool on the head, that would have been fine. And football did resume on the 17th of June in empty stadiums, of course. Sterling was back on the score sheet in a 3-0 win over Arsenal at the Etihad. On the 11th of July 2020, Sterling scored his third hat-trick of the season, a 5-0 away thrashing of Brighton. He scored another three goals in the last three league games since uh, of the season. So since the league restarted, he has scored nine in ten games, although Liverpool certainly had walked the league by then. And the FA Cup had goal in the quarter-final with Newcastle in a 2-0 win. Set up a semi against Arsenal, but again, we're rubbish. We're rubbish in the FA Cup. Pep's rubbish in the FA Cup. All right, we won it the season before, but it's proved since he's not very good. A lacklustre display by City ended in a 2-0 defeat. On the 7th of August 2020, he scored the opening goal in a 2-1 home victory against Real Madrid, knocking them out of the Champions League in the round of 16. It was his 100th goal for City in all competitions, becoming the first Englishman to reach the figure for the club since Dennis Stewart in 1981. On the 15th of August 2020, City lost 3-1 against Lyon. That was a depressing game in the Champions League. One-off quarter-final due to COVID, in which Sterling missed... Yeah, all right. He missed one of the... We see, I saw it the other day. An open goal. Yes, he should have really scored uh, to level the score. It was 2-1 at the time. Who knows what would have happened if he'd levelled it. But hey, um, he, well, he's not alone, was he? But uh, that, that was a glaring miss by anyone's estimations. So his honours on on that season. A bit disappointing. Yeah, just second in the league. So we got the Champions League qualification. And we were Carabao Cup winners. But not great, not not fantastic after what had come before. Obviously, things would improve. Uh, personal stats for Ryan Stone. This is where he stood out really on his own in, in a season that City didn't perform particularly well. It's a bit disjointed because of the COVID, of course. 
In the league, he'd made 30 appearances and three a sub, scoring 20 goals with four assists. And in the Cups, 13 appearances, five a sub, 10 goals with six assists. So that takes us on to the 2021 season. So by the end of October 2020, City sat in the bottom half. Yeah, we didn't start very well, did we? Uh, post uh, another season, the crowds were back, weren't they? At this, oh, no, the crowds were, it was not, no crowds there, of course, 2021. I'm thinking 21, 22. Uh, the crowds weren't back. It was empty stages. So, but we were struggling. We sat, had a few injuries, sat at the bottom half of the table, and all including Ryan Sterling was struggling. Although he managed three goals and a couple of assists in the Carabao Cup and Champions League games where we hadn't been doing too badly. It was just the league we were struggling a little bit. And also he had scored a couple in the league. And then a pattern uh, on the 31st of October league game at Bramall Lane. He was in scintillating form. Yeah, man of the match. The City won 1-0. But this was to be a theme where he would look great in a game or two, then quiet for a couple more. Then he'd get rested by Pep and back again. It was not entirely his fault. The team was stuttering along as well. But he found consistency even harder to come by. Despite poor league form, uh, City did had actually qualify for the Champions League group stage with a game in hand. And Ryan found some form again. The City's league position improved in December to February. Seven goals and five assists in 15 league games. In answer to City's problem scoring goals before this run, it said there will be a period when the penny drops for everyone in the team and we just have to stick at it. And that is the same for me as well. And he was proved correct. City hit top spot, yes, for the first time at the end of January. On the 7th of February 2021, Sterling scored a goal in the famous, yes, very famous, we don't do it often, 4-1 win over Liverpool at Anfield to reach his 100, that may give him his 100th goal with Manchester City under Pep Guardiola in all competitions. Possibly his best ever performance against Liverpool as well. By February 22nd, Sterling was getting as many headlines as anyone else in the City team as we opened a gap at the top of the league. Come March, though, and Pep was leaving Sterling out more often. The City, though, continued to march on. Well, almost march on. A home defeat to United ended up as a temporary blip, of course, but Sterling was possibly the worst player on the pitch as Wan-Bissaka dominated, dominated him, not for the first time either. Sterling was poor again at FA Cup semi-final defeat to Chelsea on the 17th of April and he was also struggling for game time as uh, we did at least march on in the Champions League. But all credit to him, he worked hard as City held on to the Carabao Cup in a 1-0 win at Wembley over Spurs. We were there, I was there, fans in the ground again. That was great, what a great game, great atmosphere for the considering how few fans were there. Um, of course, he was worked his socks off as the rest of the team did in that 1-0 victory over Spurs. In a precursor to the Champions League final against Chelsea and out of sorts again, Raheem, despite scoring the City goal and a lacklustre performance overall, City lost 2-1 at home, missing the chance to clinch the title at that stage and give that Chelsea that psychological another psychological advantage which we, we, we give them two or three times that season. But we did lift the title with three games to go, so Please join me, part three, as Pep makes decisions with Sterling with the ramifications both on and off the pitch. And we look forward to the Champions League and the last season, the next season, which, of course, will be Raheem's last with us. So please join me for that. And as I said, please, if you haven't watched part one, if you've watched this, go back and watch part one as well. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Please let me know your memories of Raheem. Till we meet again, stay safe, Blues. Come on, City. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.